together. So uh, having a week, a shortened week, which is great with a holiday yesterday and heading to Orange Beach on Friday uh, means a lot of work for me in the next couple of days. For those of you who don't know me, um, I am a husband and a father to three beautiful girls um, and obviously an AdvoCare distributor. But when I'm not doing those things that I love, um, I'm a lawyer and I practice mostly in family law, so I, I deal with some great stuff every day. But short weeks for me mean extra work, and so I've got a lot of law on the brain right now. And I was thinking about on my commute home um, how my legal background sometimes could play into AdvoCare and the things that I can take away from my legal career and apply to AdvoCare. Um, and I thought about, in, in particular, uh, objections and perspective that I hope I can share and, and, and just a fun way to share a wad. So there are two objections that I use during the course of trials that hopefully I can share with you and, and they can help you in your advocate journey. And the first objection you may hear me use in trial is assuming facts not in evidence. If someone's testifying or if, if someone's asking a question and that a question assumes certain facts that haven't been proven, you can make an objection as a lawyer and say, Judge, that assumes facts not in evidence. Well, the same thing happens in AdvoCare. If you are talking to someone, don't make assumptions about what they want. You need to have in-depth conversations with people. Until they tell you what it is they're looking for, you don't know. I mean, you may encounter someone who you meet in the gym who's looking for better performance, and you think, oh, muscle gain, some arginine, um, some mass impact, I'll get them going. But what they might really need is the business opportunity. No matter how they look from the outside, do not assume facts. Just because they have a nice car or wear nice clothes or can afford um, a gym membership doesn't mean they necessarily have the money they need or want. It doesn't necessarily mean they have the job that they want. Don't assume facts until you know for sure. And so the best way to avoid the objection of assuming facts not in evidence is to ask good questions. Get to know people. Get on their level. Really dig deep and build relationships because that's how you learn those facts and that's how you learn the evidence. The second objection is, sort of is in the same vein, but there's an objection inside of a trial for leading. Um, when you are conducting direct examination, so if I have a witness and I'm asking that witness questions, I can't ask the witness yes or no questions. That would be leading. So I can't say, isn't it true that you want to lose weight? That's a leading question because it calls for a yes or no. Just like you want to avoid that in a trial, you want to avoid those questions when you're building a relationship with the person. Let the person answer questions. Ask them open-ended questions. If you really want to get to know someone, if you really want to get to the meat of their story, you need to ask them open-ended questions and let them answer. The best thing about asking open-ended questions is almost inevitably they will lead to another question. You can have an entire conversation with someone just where you ask questions. And let me tell you, that's going to build a great relationship with people because they know that you want to get to know them. You're not talking. You're not interjecting. You're not leading them down a path. Just like you don't want to assume facts, you don't want to lead someone with your questions. Because if I just assume that someone wants to lose weight, and I'll say, well, you want to have a 24-day challenge, right? Yes. You want to lose weight? Yes. I might miss the fact that they also need the income opportunity. So don't lead. Those are my two objections. Don't assume facts, not in evidence, and don't lead. Ask open up questions and, and really get to know someone. So besides those objections, I also wanted to share a little bit of perspective um, because I'm preparing for a trial and I'm thinking about my witnesses and I'm thinking about how sometimes we stack witnesses and, and usually we have a few ancillary witnesses, people who just aren't that important to the big part of the story and then we have almost always what we call our star witness. 
The star witness is going to be your most credible witness that offers the most powerful testimony. And when you stack your witnesses, you want to have the other ancillary witnesses just provide either the, the preview or to bolster that star witness. Now here's what's great about AdvoCare. You never have to be that star witness. And in fact, you aren't that star witness unless you're conducting a three-way call. Your job in AdvoCare is to be the ancillary witness. It's to set up the star witness. And the star witness is your sponsor. That's why the success system works so well. Because the most credible testimony a prospect is going to hear is going to come from your sponsor. We talk about third-party credibility and why it's so important because your sponsor doesn't have a filter or your prospect doesn't know your sponsor. So there's not preconceived notions about who and what they are. They are automatically the most credible because if you've done a good job in setting up the three-way call or the two-on-one meeting, you've already edified your sponsor and these people know that they're credible. Also, when you introduce them, you're going to edify them again. And so you don't have to be the star witness. And that's a great feeling, and it's something that we should all take away. And so here's the last bit of perspective that I was considering on my way home, and, and I'm happy to share my story. Um, because from time to time, it's really easy to get discouraged inside of this business. It's, it's easy to fall in that trap where you compare yourself to other people. So let me offer this bit of perspective for you. If your journey is taking a little bit longer than some, I promise you it's worth it. I think back, um, to get a law degree, the normal course is you go to four years of undergraduate school, and then you have three years of law school. And I followed that course, so for seven years, I went to school to become a lawyer. What's the best part is that in so doing, I also accumulated about $105,000 in student loan debt, which is miserable. Um, I'm so happy to be part of the Million Dollar Debt Buster because we're watching those numbers dwindle. But I had to incur money, incur debt, and wait seven years to get a law degree and get out. And my first job with my law degree, I was a deputy prosecutor here in Indianapolis, and I made about $47,000 a year. What's great about AdvoCare is you can do that much quicker. And even if you don't, imagine if you invested seven years where you got paid along the way and you made $47,000 in seven years. Would it be worth it? For most lawyers here in Indianapolis, if they're out of law school in eight years, that's about the time it takes to generally make a partner. Most lawyers would be thrilled um, if they weren't top 10% of their class in making what an emerald makes. And so let me ask you this. That would be eight years on top of the seven years for schooling. That's 15 years. If lawyers are happy making that money in 15 years, imagine what you could do in 15 years inside of Advocare. It's a matter of sticking and staying. So just a little bit of perspective. I hope it helps. You guys are champions. For those of you heading to Orange Beach, I'll see you soon.